Guys, welcome. Week 19 of Dying at Home and uh, absolute bumper sellout this week. Uh, we've uh, yeah, we sold out I think, on Tuesday or Wednesday, so thank you so much to everyone, as always, who bought a box. I apologise for the people who missed out. I'm going to tell you, I did tell you, you've got to be quick sometimes, and this week is one of them weeks. So yeah, make sure next week, or uh, well, the week that you obviously think about having a box, all the nice and nice and early, uh, so obviously you get in there. So I apologise to the guys who missed out. But the guys who did, purchase a box, I'm going to go through your box with you right now. So the first one is a uh, beautiful milk bread, so we're back with the milk bread this week uh, with your marmite butter. As always, as I always say, get your marmite butter out as soon as you get the box, uh, so it can come to room temperature, and again with your milk bread into the oven at 180 degrees for five minutes, will be absolutely perfect. So I'll pop those uh, to one side. And now until you start to guys, because we can roll straight onto that, get back into the picture. So you will get a uh, beautiful uh, braised or confit duckling uh, tortellini that's been uh, almost seasoned with a little bit of hoisin. So you'll get that gentle hoisin flavour come through. Uh, very vibrant spring onion oil in there. Some beautiful roasted toasted hazelnuts. And uh, this is a pot of salera velouté, uh, roasted salera velouté, which is for two people. So that is in there. So what I'm going to do guys, simply I've got a little pan of simmering water on the back, make sure it is simmering. So it's not boiling, we just want a gentle simmer because if it's boiling, it will knock the ravioli, or the, in this case the tortellini, it will knock it all over the pan. You don't want that because it could split or obviously uh, open up or whatever. So uh, keep it nice and rolling. You just want to heat it through. So, so imagine just, just sitting in simmering water. And then you obviously with your velouté, you can, you can heat it up in the microwave if you would like to. And I'm going to obviously heat mine up in the pan, uh, which obviously I'll put on the back, on the back stove. So I will go and put this in for about three, three minutes. So I pop that into the simmering water straight away, three minutes. Leave it there, and then I would also pop that salera velouté, or one portion's worth, into into a pan now as well. I'll that thing for about three to four minutes. So join me in three to four minutes when everything will be hot and ready to go, and uh, yeah, we'll show you how to plate it. Okay, guys. So it's been three minutes. So if you haven't, get yourself something like this or a slotted spoon. This was three ninety nine from Amazon. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure the places sell them. This is absolutely incredible. It's got a little, little spoon as well. So anyway. Uh, Tortellini is heating on the back. It's fully hot, three minutes, that's all it requires. So with this little scoop, I'm going to pop that out and obviously drain the water as well. I've just got a little J cuff on there as well, quite shifty that is, this little J cuff uh, obviously enables um, the drainage to, uh, to happen as well. So then there, there is my blue tape, it's nice and hot as well. So let's just put one portion in there, managed to get it all over the uh, table as well. So uh, what I always do with the guys who are returning with the raviolis or tortellinis, obviously I haven't done a tortellini before, but the raviolis I always express, put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. It just adds that little bit of luxury. I know we've already got an oil, but just add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to the tortellini. A little sprinkle of um, more than sea salt on top. Don't use table salt. It's too, uh, you know, it's too, it's too much, basically. It's, it's that sort of sodium, sodium sort of flavor to it. It's, it's that more than sea salt is perfect. And I love black pepper, uh, so I like to put a little bit of crap black pepper on there as well. Again, I'll leave that totally to you. So where the little lips sort of uh, uh, um, come together there, which we obviously push together, almost have that facing you as the customer, to have that facing you personally. Um, I would, if you're serving it, especially if it's a table of obviously two or four, I'll pop it into a little jug. Uh, I will obviously, for the, for the video, I'll just pour it freehand. Uh, but you still want the, the, the ravioli, just to, uh, the, sorry, the soup just to almost, um, get lost in that ravioli and that tortellini in there. It separates all, all, all around. It's really thick as well. It's a delicious, delicious soup. Um, your spring onion oil. It's, it's a similar sort of oil to chive, really. It isn't as intense sort of flavor of chive. It's more, as I said, it's obviously more of an onion sort of flavor. So don't be too shy with this. It's a really nice contrast with the celeria. I put quite a bit in there. I mean, don't go mental, but obviously just, get, just, just don't be too shy either. It's a really nice contrast with the soup. Um, and more so with the duck, obviously you've, you've had sort of spring rolls, you know, duck spring rolls from the Chinese before, I've sort of worked on that sort of flavour with the spring onion. And then you've got some hazelnuts as well, again we haven't been shy with the hazelnuts, remember this isn't a very sort of texture, texture sort of, uh, textural dish, so we've, uh, we've obviously put some hazelnuts in there, so every mouthful you want that sort of texture in there as well. So that is your finished dish guys, what I'll do, I'll just pop it in, and it's in front of you like that. So you've got a delicious um, celera velouté, with your, uh, your tortellini of confit duck with a, a little bit of a hint of hoisin sauce, a spring onion oil and toasted hazelnuts. I hope you enjoyed guys.
Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the starter. Uh, we thought it was delicious, really nice, flavoursome, uh, sort of stereo, glute egg, uh, and the duck leg was just delicious as well. So, hopefully, you enjoyed it, guys. So, on to your main course. Uh, this is an absolute, yeah, one of my favourite main courses we've done. This is, I want to say that I think it is absolutely delicious, this main course. So, we've got some beautiful um, Herefordshire beef uh, from Charlie from Water Rose. You can get this exact product from Water Rose if you would like to. We've, we've actually brined the, uh, the rib of beef for, for six days, which is actually the top rib, so essentially it's called a Jacob's Ladder. Uh, so this is the, uh, yes, this is obviously the rib of beef, so the Jacob's Ladder that we brine for four days in a 10% salt brine, and we cook it for a further two days in the water bath. So you know, we started getting this beef on obviously sort of that Saturday, um, so just to sort of basically tell you to the amount of work that goes into it, you know, we don't just flash fry these sort of things, you know, there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of, sort of uh, work that goes into these menus. So this is your rib of beef that we've obviously cooked and portioned. So all that requires is a, is a pan fry, which I'm obviously going to go through with you in a second. You'll have a beautiful beef fat onion. So we obviously buy the beef fat in, we roast it in the oven with thyme, garlic, a bit of salt and pepper, and then we cook the caramelized roasted onions after that, uh, in that fat obviously. And then we have a beautiful piece of squash. And this particular squash is just broken a little bit, just stops the tomato video. You'll have a nice piece of wedge of squash, uh, which is pre-cooked again, so you just need to sort of roast in the pan and get some beautiful uh, color on there. Some beautiful fresh kale, uh, obviously English kale. Uh, we've made a beautiful squash puree from the trim of the uh, squash. Some pumpkin seeds with lightly toasted and seasoned, like a little, little bit of texture in the dish, and a beautiful rich beef jus as well. So uh, the beef shoe obviously goes into a little saucepan and squash. I'll just heat up in the microwave, that's what I'm gonna do. Obviously with your toasted pumpkin seeds, straight away uh, room temperature's there then to use. Uh, for your water, uh, for your water, sorry, for your uh, kale, that goes straight into a little uh, rolling, uh, rolling boil, boiling water uh, for literally 30 seconds. If you don't like your kale to have any texture, it be really soft, obviously, but the depth out of it, but I certainly wouldn't recommend that. And then goes up to your beef, onion, and squash, which I'm going to show you uh, on the pan. So I've just got a pan, a non-stick pan, on a medium heat, uh, which I'm going to add a little bit of oil to, and then we'll, 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 we'll basically show you how to cook it. Really, really simple. Time. So come on over, and uh, yeah, I can show you how to do it. As you'll notice, guys, I've already got a pan on uh, the rolling, rolling, boiling pan there, and that's for my kale. So get that on as early as you want. Or obviously, if you're at home, you know, the luxury of a kettle, obviously boil your kettle nice and early, and then pop that uh, kettle onto the pan, uh, onto the stove. And obviously, you will uh, you'll get nice uh, hot water quicker than something I will. So as you can see, it's on a seriously low heat. I can already see it's been on for about three minutes, and it's got some real heat in that pan to be fair. So I'm going to leave it on there. Uh, on that heat for the second, for a second, and then if I need to up the heat, I will do. But remember, all this is cooked, so we're just reheating, so it's quite important that you get a nice sort of roast on it. So I'm going to gently, obviously, you can see this is like a towel piece, and I've shown you this piece because some of the pieces aren't, you know, some of the pieces are perfect, sort of rectangular. This piece itself, as you can see, it's got like a towel piece, so it's sort of a beautiful piece. It'll take a little bit of work when you roast it. So you're going to roast that pretty much on all, what, six, four, eight, six sides. So we're going to roast it all on six sides there. Um, sort of as quickly as we can. As you can hear, the pan is super hot, even on a low heat. It's a really, really absorbed all that heat. So I'm not going to turn it up, I'm going to leave it on there, uh, just as we go. So I'm just going to grab a spoon and show you how it's done. That will gather, gather sort of colour almost straight away, as you can see, look at that. Absolutely stunking. So we'll go all the way around, nice and quick. So 15 to 20 seconds on each side. And on this sort of the penultimate side, uh, we'll then add the squash and then after that we'll have the onion. That's two sides, that's three sides. We'll have the onion, uh, we'll have the squash in a second. Obviously yours will be a whole piece. Around that we'll just cook it in butter. we we'll just literally wrap it in butter, so that's all it is. We'll pop that in, no seasoning. It's already been seasoned. Don't want to worry about that. And then onto the fat side. The fat side on the top, some of you will have a nice sort of thick piece of fat, and some of you won't have any fat at all, it just depends on where it is, but there's fat obviously through, through the beef itself, so it doesn't actually matter what piece you get. But if you do get a piece of, uh, piece of beef with, a, with a, a layer of fat on top, just render it down a little bit more, just so you're rendering that, rendering that fat down. If you, like me, like the fat, then don't render it down at all, just, just literally just roast it up and caramelise it, and that's all. It'll be absolutely fine. So the squash is starting to colour there. Again, guys, I said it's already pre-cooked, so it's going to colour up a lot quicker than it normally would if it was raw. Okay, so again, that's just a bit of beef fat in there, around the onion, delicious. Pop that in the pan as well now. So it pretty much colours all three, all four sides of the beef. I'm just going to do the top, 
and I do revert the other side as well. It doesn't matter what side you roast, you, know, you put it in the oven, it doesn't really matter at all. It's not going to caramelise too much. I would recommend whatever side is fattier, just reheat it on that side because it just tend to render that fat down even more. Uh, but other than that, I really wouldn't worry about it. I'm going to put it on the more fattier side. The beef's already roasted, so again, you'll get a lovely colour on the, I'm sorry, the onion's already roasted, so you'll get a lovely colour on the onion. Pop that upside down there, leave that to roast that side, and then the squash is getting some nice colour on as well, as you can see with that there. So, that's all ready to go. The pan is still on. I'm going to add only a couple of knobs of butter, because again, we've already got the butter coming off the squash, we've already got the fat coming off the onion, and the beef as well is to be rendering that fat, so there's nothing there. So, pop it in at 180. This will only take about six to eight minutes in this oven because it's obviously a very well, professional hot oven. Uh, so I'm going to put that on for a well, I'll put it on for about seven minutes in, right in the middle. And then uh, but at home, I would probably tend to do it for about about ten, maybe even twelve minutes, depending on the heat of your uh, heat of your oven on the quality of your oven, should I say? Uh, but don't worry about it; it's absolutely fine. Just make sure that beef should be should be super soft so it's falling apart. When you touch it, it should be really sort of bouncy soft. Uh, and all I'm going to do, rather than that, is I'm going to do the kale and obviously heat up my sauce and my puree in the microwave. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, if there's eight minutes on that, I'll probably start those at six minutes so we all come together at the same time. Okay, so join me in six minutes. I'll cook the kale, the puree and the sauce with you and then we'll get ready to plate. Okay, see you in a second. Okay guys, so it's been seven minutes. Uh, I have heated my puree up uh, in the microwave for about 30 to 40 seconds and my sauce is on. The, the back there. So I'm just going to pop my kale in the boiling bit or the simmering boiling water. Uh, I'm going to actually grab my trusty little spoon, see, two, two times. So press that down, make sure it's all covered, and just leave that to boil on. And I'll also reuse the, the Jacob tray as well to, to, to rip off to drain the, uh, <coughs> to drain the kale on. So I'm going to get the pan out of the oven. Okay, delicious. So, if you haven't actually got, uh, if you know your uh, pans aren't oven proof, um, guys, just transfer it to a uh, transfer it to a, obviously a tray is absolutely fine. There's no problem with that at all. As you can see, so the beef itself, since it actually sort of almost springs back, that's the sort of texture that you want. So it's obviously it's not, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's super soft. You can sort of see it sort of springs back. Uh, that's all basically what you want. You don't obviously want it rock hard. Um, as you can see, look at that beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And then you squash on that one side with a colour, maybe slightly more, but certainly not over colour. And those little just sort of dark, charry bits you know, on the dish as well, just on, on the squash, it's just so tasty. It's just adding flavour and flavour and flavour all the time. It's, it's exactly what it's all about. So, uh, butter in that sort of beef fat and putting the squash um, sort of butter as well is all in there. That's all in there. I love that. So, uh, squash uh, puree is obviously hot, pumpkin seeds on the side. Cow will be ready now, so I'll get my trusty slot in too. And we will open that. The sauce is obviously on as well, which is actually hot. Completely, uh, completely heated, that's into there. Perfect, beautiful, that's the kale. Now, I haven't seasoned any of my water, so a lot of chefs or a lot of people at home have season the water. That's absolutely fine, but because I'm cooking it so quickly, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to season the uh, cow when it comes out. Uh, I, would obviously, I would recommend doing that personally. But if you want to put some salt in your water, you can absolutely go for it. But now we are on to plating, it's that simple. You don't need to rest your beef or your veg or anything because it's already fully cooked. You can, you know, you can obviously do it, it's been resting for about a minute or two anyway, so we are obviously adding a little bit of resting too, but that's it. So squash puree, always give you loads of puree because it adds that sort of, you know, it's that soft texture, that soft liquid uh, that the, the dish always needs. It always needs a bit of a carrying texture to it. And I always think the puree really, really brings that. I'm just going to take that uh, sauce off before it uh, reduces to nothing. So, beautiful piece of beef. Drain up. You want to keep some of that on there. You, know, you really do. You want to keep some of that, that, uh, that fat on there. I mean, as I said, you know, these guys are buying, you, know, you guys are buying this. You know, it's date night, isn't it? You're treating yourself. So, as always, see, make sure you, you treat yourself by making sure you get as much fat on there as possible. Right? Okay, so you squash obviously out, mine's broken, or has it broken, so you can just sort of yours look a bit neater than mine. And really cow guys, obviously it goes cold pretty quickly, so again just um, move as quickly as you can, so I've sort of got it straight out, but really cow, just you sort of want to space it out a little bit, it almost as much as like a camouflage for it all, so it has a beautiful bit of, beautiful bit of colour. 
pumpkin seeds, this is literally just for texture. In the restaurant, at Adam's, I used to put it on top of the puree because obviously it sticks to the puree so it doesn't fly around the, around the plate. So here I'm just going to sort of gently scoot or sort of shake them on just, just off it. So you can still see the beautiful colour of the puree underneath, uh, but equally they're going to stick to that as well. So the case is sauce it has slightly over reduced. So I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little spoon and pop a little bit of this kale water in. The two reasons is obviously the kale water is literally just kale water and it isn't seasoned. So it's not going to, to ruin my sauce. So another tip, don't season the water. Another reason why there we are, beautiful. So again, if you, if you do over reduce your sauce, just pop a little bit of your kale water in or boiling water from the tap, it's absolutely fine. And then just sauce all that beef, guys. So anything that needs sourcing. And if you want to be a bit fancy, put a couple of drops in and around. I'll tell you what, that's one of the best main courses that we've done, not only on play that, but it looks absolutely delicious as well. I'll turn it around to you and explain it to you. Get that? Awesome. So it's your beautiful short rib of beef, guys. Six day uh, short rib of beef with your beautiful roasted beef fat onion, squash just hiding behind, puree with pumpkin seeds, beautiful fresh uh, winter or autumn kale, and uh, finish off with a delicious beef sauce, guys. Please make sure you enjoy that one because I'm sure you probably will. Yeah. How good was that? You enjoy that right? Absolutely delicious. Right, I'll just, I'll, I'll just nailed that beef dish and I thought it was absolutely delicious. I thought the texture of the beef was lovely. I thought the garnish was super autumnal, super flavoursome. So really guys, I hope you enjoyed it as well. We mean, we go as we mean to go on. So this is your dessert guys. It is a beautiful, we may have moved out of Manor Farm, but we haven't forgotten them use their beautiful raspberries, fresh raspberries that are still being produced today. So we're going to get yourself down around the farm if we want to. This is a beautiful frangipan tart base, it's like a bake world tart, but we've, that we've obviously had a farm with raspberries. We've studied five in there, uh, some of you may have four, but some of them are absolutely massive. Uh, really simple guys, I actually turn my oven off, but the residual heat of the oven will beautifully warm this tart, tart food. I wouldn't recommend putting it into the microwave because it can sometimes sort of make the tart soggy. Uh, but again, just, just put it in there. I think you're, you're, if you're sharing a tray, the tray is slightly larger. Just put it straight in the oven, guys. And you only need to put it in there for about a minute, if that. Uh, the residual heat of that oven will, will 100% warm it through. We're not baking it, we're not baking it again. If you would like to have a really boiling hot tart again, leave your, uh, leave your oven on 180 and obviously bake it for two to three minutes. Uh, with the Manor Farm, raspberries are made a little coolie. Uh, again, super sharp. It's just to cut through the richness or the fattiness of the frangipan tart itself. Uh, so again, you don't require too much of that food to be quite honest. And we've got a beautiful, vibrant, yet creamy and delicious uh, raspberry uh, ice cream. This is the exact raspberry ice cream recipe and ice cream that I used to do on the raspberry and pistachio dish at Adams. Uh, I developed the recipe and I think it's absolutely wonderful. So I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Uh, so just, I'm gonna grab that from the freezer and then we'll just grab the tart on the way back and we will plate it nice and quickly and you will get to enjoy that uh, sooner rather than later, guys. Okay, so see you in two seconds. Okay, guys, so, uh, yeah, time's been in. What, 30, 30 seconds, 60 seconds? I think Mike thought the uh, freezer was a bit further away than actually what it was, so he just pressed forward there, that's better. <laughs> so, uh, tart case obviously there. Uh, your ice cream, guys, obviously, as always, it'll give you two little, uh, do you want to call that? Ploosh, yeah, ploosh, the ploosh of, uh, of ice cream, right, yeah? Mm. So, uh, yeah, two little ploosh's of your raspberry ice cream, delicious. Uh, obviously, your tart as well, so be careful to get that out, because obviously the metal will get to nice and quickly. Uh, you'll see it really moves about on the plate, so a little tip, tiny little dot, maybe cooler on the bottom. Pull out the tart, it doesn't move, that's simple. So again, with your cooling, I will just put that literally a little dot, uh, that's what we need. I mean, it's super, super, it's super, super um, it's sour. Uh, to it. And then grab your, the whole idea why I do these little moulds or mounds or blushes, as you will, uh, is literally because you spoon it straight out. Then it goes straight onto that plate, straight onto the coolie. And you it might not look the best. Oh, I think it looks delicious, but to you, it might not look as struggling as it needs to, but it's, it's all about how it eats, it's all about how it tastes. And there, my friends, is your finishing dessert for this week 19's menu and it will not disappoint at all. It is a beautiful Manor Farm raspberry uh, frangipan tart with raspberry coulis and a beautiful raspberry ice cream uh, which is a, a, a lovely recipe that we developed out of it. And that guys concludes your, uh, your week 19. 
obviously with your beautiful chocolate fudge that we've made, you sprinkle a tiny bit of sea salt on top of that and enjoy that with a tea or coffee. It goes absolutely beautifully. And that concludes everything, guys. So thank you so much to everybody who has purchased the box this week. Those who missed out, I apologise. Make sure you be quicker next time. Uh, but again, I can't thank you all enough for the support. Uh, you're absolutely legends, a whole lot of you. And uh, yeah, we're going to release some Christmas boxes or the menus for Christmas very, very soon because we want to sort of uh, make sure that you guys are covered for Christmas. So we're going to, going to sort of um, obviously release those. We're actually going to do, I'm actually going to do a Christmas dinner for you guys uh, that's going to be delivered Christmas Eve. So if you're worried about Christmas, me and Mikey are going to do here a turkey dinner with all the trimmings. It's ready to go, dine at home style. And yeah, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be released pretty, sh pretty short, pretty sharp. So get involved with that as and when you can. But keep supporting us as you do. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you same time, same place next week. Stay safe.